so what we just did, we looked at the first objective, um, understand what uh, different objects that can be inserted onto a page are and what their respective contextual menus are. So we're just going to look at the second objective, describe and apply several methods of formatting an image covering borders, grouping, ordering, and positioning. But to do that, we've opened up a file called Global Warming. And as you can see, it's got um, several types of um, images in there. Um, the tourism feels the heat of global warming, and it's all about, you know, global warming, the Maldives, what's happening there, Kibusho, um lack of snow over there, and so on. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to apply some formatting to the first for the first image. So just double click on the image Mesoamerican Reef. Just double click that. All right. It's worth mentioning when you when you click it once, picture tools comes up, okay? But when you double click it, it actually shows you what's in the toolbox. All right. So what have we got here? Okay. The main the main things that you need to probably know for your um well for the exam is picture border, um, position, and wrap text. And there's some more. There is some more um, bits that we will do in a bit, but let's just look at let's look at um, uh, picture borders, okay? And I think you ha you can make notes on this because on your worksheet there is that section there, formatting um, images and shapes. We're gonna jump to the bit that says adding borders and effects, which is the third one down. So you double click the image, click on picture border. That's in your picture styles group. So we're gonna click on picture border. Um, and then we're just going to basically choose a color, choose any random color you like, because the the color you choose is the color of the line of your border. You then have to go back into picture border and go down to weight. Okay, so weight is your line thickness, and let's just make that three points, and you can see that the border comes around your image <clears throat> and there we have it a picture border and you have all these special effects as well so if you wanted to add a bit more um, you know special effects to the images just expand the picture styles uh, group there and you can see you can just move the mouse over each one and we'll highlight we'll preview how each each um, each style of that image that you could uh, okay just come away to go back to your own border but certainly adding a border is one of the things that we need to know um, what about resizing making this image bigger or smaller we need to do that and there are a couple of ways to do that um, if you look at your image, you see these points around it, okay? All you gotta do is click and drag those points to increase or decrease the image, like this. You put the mouse over a point and the mouse changes to a double-sided arrow. And you can just make it smaller or bigger. Okay? We don't need to make this sm any smaller or any bigger, just to demonstrate what's happening there. But if you need to put in a special measurement we need to go over here to your size group okay and you got height and you got width measurements here and just over there what we can do we can actually modify your height and your width from there as well it's worth it's just worth mentioning when you do this um uh when you when you resize your height you'll notice that the uh, the width automatically increases doesn't it Okay, so there is a question. I mean, there is a level two question. You know, you might as well know it now, but they might ask you to put two separate measurements in there. But how do you do that? Because when, whatever you put in one automatically changes the other. So we need to know what's going on there. So let's demonstrate. Click on your size drop down box and let's take a look in there, see what's going on.
Okay, now you can see up here that we've got height and width, right? If we take a look down here, you see that this box here is checked. What does that box say? Down here. Lock aspect ratio. Okay, what that means, whatever the ratio is of your image is locked. If you increase the height, the width is automatically going to increase. Okay, the only way to put two separate um, measurements in is to take it off. Okay, and that is, and that, they, you wouldn't, they wouldn't ask you this in your level one exam, but level two, when you do Word, you have to, they might ask you to, uh, to, do, to do that. So click OK. Uh, you might want to make a quick note of that as well. <laughs> right, what, what we want to do now is, so far we've, we've edited this image, we've added the border, we've changed the size of it, uh, but we, we also just got to be able to insert an image into the document from several sources. So how do we do that? What menu tab are we going to here? Insert. Insert. Very well. Now, one, one problem a lot of learners tend to have when they begin in sort of IT, even at level one or even level two, some learners, is that they think you can add a f an image from the file menu. Why is that wrong? Why, is, why can't you add an image from, a f from the file menu? Why is it you have to go to insert and not file? Yeah, you're inserting something into the document. You're not, you're not, um, you're not opening a document. You're inserting, you're adding something on the page. So you have to go to the insert. But for some reason, it confuses some learners when it says open this, this, this image. So you think, well, I've got to go to file and open it. So that's always insert. So let's just have a quick look here. So in the illustrations group, okay, picture. Uh, if you're going to add a picture, what that does, it adds, it, it looks, it looks, um, it's looking uh, from your file, okay, from your file and system. It's going to go to a file location to find that image somewhere in your computer. What about clip art? What does that do? Yes, most mostly online in a Microsoft library, thousands of, of copyrights royalty free images um you know if if you if, if you're worried about going on google images for a project and taking an image as copyrights um you can go on uh clip art and you'll have a lot of images there to to choose okay so well, the first thing we're going to do is click on picture and you need to browse to your own folder for this one um So I'm just going to go to where I've kept it. You need to know your file locations. You need to know um, how to so quickly access your drive, um, wherever that is as well. Uh, so I'm going to just go click on that one. So I think I'm also on the network as well. So I'm just going to go to public, level one. Okay, there it is, Mount Kilimanjaro, located it, insert, <clears throat> and when you've done that, it comes up a bit big, okay, just resize it so it's a, a decent size. Okay, is it not on your... Uh... So, we've inserted an image on the screen there, um, so... I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. What we also have to demonstrate, what, I'm, what I want to demonstrate as well, is something called position and wrap text. Because um, once this image is on the screen, if I, if I wanted to move this picture to the right-hand side here, okay, I try to click and drag it, it doesn't budge, does it? I can't move it. That's because there's a set of conditions called wrap text that is affecting how my image um, behaves on my page, okay? That's because um, it's currently in line with text. That's the setting it's on, in line with text. If you if you double click it and go into your arrange group up here, there's a 
There's a button called wrap text, and that's very important. Okay, when it comes to creating posters, anything with text and graphics, you've got to be aware of that button as well. Because as you can see, what setting is it currently on? Inline with text. Okay, so it's actually locked in that position. If we wanted to, to, to release it, we have to either choose one of these two, square or tight. So just, just, just choose square for now. And you will don't don't be afraid if you or, or alarmed if you see everything moves out of place. It just means that the text is now reacting with with the image. What I wanted to do is we're just going to slide, click and drag the image, slide it to the right like this. You can see you can now move the image. Okay, it now appears on the right hand side, doesn't it? And you can move it in. You can actually position it where you want. You can you can have it in the middle of your text. Like that. Yeah? It comes in the middle of your text. You can put it on the right. Okay, so don't forget text wrapping. Very, very important. It allows you to move your images about your page as well. I'm just going to click probably at the end here and hit enter a couple of times just to move that other bit down. Right, okay, so we've done that. Um, you can also play around with this as well because there, there are also some other cool things like um, if you chose behind text, that picture, will, you can then actually move it behind your text like this. And obviously, if you colored your text like different colors, you can create postcards and stuff like that with images and text. So wrap text. You can, you can move your text around with wrap text using square or tight settings. You can choose behind text. You can place the image behind text. Um, all with that um, particular option. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted all of, the, all of the words behind the picture, You'd have to edit the text directly. You'd have to probably do enter here, so more comes here, like this. If I did enter, maybe at this point here, and then maybe enter here again. You see, I, I can, I'm, I'm sort of getting most of it in there. I could then highlight my text like this, and maybe make it a bit smaller. I mean, I could have done a bit more editing as well. I could have maybe just done enter there as well. Highlight, highlight my text. I can highlight my text again. And I can change the color to maybe white so it stands out. Or maybe red. Red might even stand out because the, because of mountain of snow. I'm just thinking maybe that might be better. So. Yeah, so you can actually, you can see how you can quite easily, quickly create postcards and birthday cards and all kinds of stuff with this, um, which is quite good. There's also, there's also a, um, if, if I just undo that a few times, there's also something called position, and all position does, if I click onto that, it is a version of wrap text, but what it does, it automatically places your picture in certain positions in your page. Like you have, there's a quick setting for top left or top center or top right. You know, if you wanted this to be positioned around the page in the middle, these are quick positions. Okay. It's not as versatile as wrap, wrap text. You put it where you want to put it, but position is quite automatic. It's an automatic system. You know, if I did top left, it will go to the top left. If I do top right, it goes to the top right. If I do dead center, so and it is still it is on a, a wrap text setting still, so I can further move it around. Okay, and that and that is you know text and graphics. Um, really, we looked at. We looked at, we first of all looked at editing the, the, the image with borders, picture borders, adjusting the, 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 the weight of it, the outline of it. Um, 
We then went to resize it using the size menu. We learned about lock aspect ratio, what that's all about. We inserted an image from, from a file, learned the differences between clip art and from a file location. And then we finished with wrap text, being able to move the image around your page very easily with wrap text and also position where you can quickly position um, the graphics on the page.